Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Minecraft Create tutorial. This episode, I'll be showing you guys how to automate honey, chocolate, and builder's tea using the Minecraft Create mod. So we're going to begin our little adventure into all the liquids in the Create mod with the bees. So we got like pretty much a vanilla honey farm set up here. So we got a row of beehives. In front of those beehives, we have the flowers. Uh, one thing I'm going to mention quick about the beehives is they are directional. So you can see that little slot on the front of them. Now that must be facing kind of outwards towards the flowers. And behind the, the beehives, we have dispensers. Now I've got half of these dispensers set up with shears, and the other half with glass bottles. Now the reason for this is whenever they get a signal, basically they use that item on the beehive. Then the item goes on top of this grass block, gets sucked up by the minecarts with hoppers, down to these hoppers, and then onto our belts. Now how we're actually activating the dispensers is with a little simple redstone clock using create. So we have two adjustable repeaters set to 10 seconds. You can kind of adjust this as you see fit, um, but I found 10 seconds is usually a good way to do it where, or it'd be 20 seconds total where you're like, you're not gonna have honey sitting here for too long. And then to actually feed these, we got a shoot on top of the dispensers. Then up here we have two little loops of items, one with the bottles and one with shears. So the bottles will never actually empty. The only requirement is that you have a nine stacks of bottles per dispenser. It's probably an easier way to do that, but I found that that's the best way to kind of make sure that we're always full on bottles and we're always using them immediately. So as long as you have at least those nine stacks, plus I'd say maybe like eight more um, as for the buffer when it actually goes around. And then as far as shears, um, kind of same deal. You need at least nine per dispenser, plus a few extra. Um, now the shears you will have to refill at over time because they do take durability. So if I go and look at one of these dispensers, you can see that they do lose durability. Now they're only lose durability if they can actually harvest something, so it's not too big of a deal. Now when our items are done, you can see that we just actually harvest some honeycomb. They kind of travel up here, up this belt, and then over here we have a brass tunnel. Now what this tunnel is doing is it's separating the all the drops from the bottom into two lanes. One is the honeycomb, which just goes in this chest, and the other is empty, which will just take the bottles and bottles of honey. Now both the bottles and bottles of honey travel over this item drain. The reason for that is if I grab some bottles of honey, just grab a stack, two stacks, what it'll do is that item drain will actually automatically take the honey from there. And then I got a pump set up here, mechanical pump, going into our fluid tank, so it's automatically pumping the honey out of there and into our fluid tank. So we're automatically collecting the fluid tank, which we can then transfer and use for other things. Now, if I wanted to, I could also like add a second um, belt going off here to take the honey bottles because honey bottles are used to craft the honey blocks. So if I do want to have the honey blocks or if I wanted to use them to craft sugar, that could be another option where I could use the honey bottles for that. But I could always go ahead and refill bottles in the future by using a spout with a create mod um, to actually fill these back up if I wanted to. So now what can you actually do with the honey? Now there's two kind of different options. The one is to fill up buckets or bottles, which you can use to craft honey blocks, honeycomb blocks, um, and then the actual honey buckets, which you can actually <laughs> place in your world. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, to actually place it in your world, you have two options. One is Use filling by spout, so I'm just going to open this valve. Honey will go over here into our spout. We grab some bottles, I'll show you that too. We can see, once this fills up with honey, it'll fill up a bucket. Grab the buckets off here and place honey in my world. Now, the other option is I could put glass bottles here and I will get my honey bottles again. So if say I wanted to transfer these on like a train or something, I wanted to use a tank. What I could do is like pump it into a tank, transfer it long distances, and then pump it into bottles at a separate location, like say I like want like a separate bottling plant, um, separate from where I'm generating my honey, that's totally an option. The other thing I can do is if I go ahead and open this valve, is if you pump honey into a hose pulley, I have this kind of just down into this tank, what it'll actually do is it'll work very similar to water, where it'll actually fill up the space with the honey source blocks. So just give it a little bit of time and it can actually fill this area up. So if you wanted to, say, fill up a big pool with honey um, to look like a giant golden pool, or if you do want a pool of honey, that's that's totally an option, and it works It works pretty well. 
Now, honey doesn't provide any special buffs by swimming in it. It's pretty much literally the exact same as water, except you can't see very far in it as if you were in lava. Basically, like the same debuff as if you're in lava when you're swimming in it. Now, a really cool thing about the honey source blocks is that you can actually generate limestone with it. There's two different ways you can do this. If you have it coming from the side like this, where the lava is what moves, you get this limestone cobblestone, which I think is very cool. It's a good way to generate this. Now, this can't actually be used for anything. Um, you can make it normally with stone cutting, um, but sadly, you can't use it to craft anything except what regular limestone can do. But what is really cool is that if you put a lava here and a honey here, then the honey is what moves and links the block, and you get pure limestone, which the recipe before requires a whole lot of crushing. Or alternatively, yeah, crushing. <laughs> you pretty much have to crush sand twice or cobblestone three times just to get limestone and smelt it. So this is a super nice way to get a lot of limestone if you want to. Basically, all you need to do is attach a drill to here and collect your awesome limestone. So the last thing I want to mention about honey is that if you go pretty insane with your production originally, you can make an infinite source of honey. Now, it's not easy. You actually need 10,000 source blocks of honey to get infinite honey. <laughs> it's, it's no small order, that's for sure, but for any of those of you who really like to grind and like to make stuff that's just absolutely silly, I think this would be a very fun project to tackle. Because um, when you get 10,000 source blocks of honey, when you pump it out using a create, a create pump, it'll actually assume that this is an infinite source. It's an ocean, basically. <laughs> You've created an ocean of honey. So if you actually craft this many source blocks of honey, pump it into a tank that's 20 by 20 blocks, 20 by 20 by 20 cube, um, it'll actually see it as an infinite source and you can pump honey out of here forever. It's a, it's a fun little trick. Um, the one thing you're gonna wanna note is that if you when you're using the pump and the hose pulley, the hose pulley has to go all the way down to the bottom. So if it's at one of these top layers, it'll only see what's on this top layer. So when you're doing this, make sure that your hose pulley pump goes all the way down to the bottom if you're having troubles with it. And what's cool is that you can actually get on a little boat and <laughs> kind of sail around in the honey. It has the same physics as water. Almost feels a little more like a little more like momentum. Not sure that <laughs> it might be a placebo, but yeah, this one's pretty cool. So the next thing I'm going to show you how to craft is chocolate. Now, chocolate comes in two flavors. It comes in buckets, which, again, you can kind of do the crazy um, <laughs> 10k source block trick. Um, you can also like swim around it, use it as decoration, whatever you really want to do with it. But the other thing about chocolate is you can make a chocolate bar. Now, the chocolate bar does not give much food, um, honestly. I don't think I've ever crafted it in survival, and I'm not sure why you would. I mean, it's a very fun craft to do, but... It really doesn't provide much saturation, and I don't know how good it is. I definitely think like to see it get a buff in future versions of Create, like maybe give you a speed effect or like a extra saturation or something, because the effort it takes to craft, I feel like a little bit outweighs what it actually gives you. But anyway, how to actually craft this. Now, chocolate takes three ingredients. Sugar, cocoa beans, and milk. So production starts over here with a cocoa bean farm. I got a really simple design going on with a minecart just kind of going back on this track. Contraption here with just four um, harvesters. This thing's going to keep up no matter what. This thing goes very fast. I think that this will be plenty to support a good sized chocolate farm. You might need to expand it eventually, and I think the easiest way to do that would be going over. Because um, every, every single block you go over, you can do another four cocoa beans. And these things grow pretty quick, so... Yeah, I can see it harvests one there, and then as it comes back around, it puts them onto this track. The next pretty simple ingredient is going to be the sugar. So sugar here, simple ready farm with harvesters. Got a portable storage interface to kind of take it out here. And then goes down into a millstone, and the millstone is what actually makes the sugar. So see sugar king goes in, mills up, sugar comes out. The last step is milk. Now milk is actually super easy. All we gotta do, get buckets. I think it only need maybe four to ten. Um, probably eat very easily get away with one even. Um, use the deployer, power the deployer, give it a bucket. Out the back, 
have a brass funnel, make sure you have a filter for the milk bucket in there. If it's no filter or just the bucket, it'll actually take the buckets out and you won't actually be using it on the cow, so make sure you got your filter in there. Then we're just kind of going over a item drain, which actually takes the milk, puts it into this pump and into our basin. And then the milk flops over on this side and gets funneled back around into our deployer. So we don't waste any buckets and it kind of just goes on forever milking this one cow, providing us infinite milk. Then with all those ingredients, the last ingredient is a blaze burner, a power blaze burner. So over here we have a deployer with some charcoal. Now this can be hooked up to your power farm. Uh, if you have a power farm that's producing a lot of extra charcoal, or you could just do a tree farm that's just feeding it uh, regular wood. Wood can also power this guy. Put it in deployer, he will automatically feed your blaze burner. And then once you have all your ingredients pumped into here, what will happen is your mechanical mixer will drop down into the basin, mix it all up. It'll pour into here, into this item drain. We're pumping into the item drain into this fluid tank. So all in all, it's really not too complicated. It seems like a mess because I made this very compact. So a lot of the stuff you're just seeing is belt work, but each individual component's pretty easy and they're very easily scale scalable. One thing I definitely will mention is our bottleneck is sugar right now with this farm design. So definitely you're gonna need to double, if not triple the sugar cane farm if you wanna have a sustainable, very quick chocolate producing farm. Now to actually get our chocolate bars, we gotta do is we gotta compact them. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this valve. We're gonna pump our chocolate into here. Then as that goes, we're gonna just start compacting it. And I've just got a little spout going onto the belt, popping out here, and we have our bars of chocolate which you can eat. All right, there we go. You can go ahead and eat the chocolate. Yeah, no, 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 no buffs, and I don't think it gives much saturation, but it's a, it's a fun little craft, it's a fun little item. Another super cool little hidden thing you can do with chocolate and Craymon is you can actually generate scoria, just like how you can generate limestone with honey. So literally the same thing as limestone with honey, you can generate the cobble in this kind of design where the lava is the thing that moves. And over here you can generate the just plain old scoria in this kind of design where the chocolate is the thing that moves, which you can then use this scoria to not only craft dark scoria, but also craft all the different scoria recipes. And then, of course, you can do the same thing with honey. You can make a chocolate ocean, <laughs> swim out it with your boat, dive in. Now, again, if you dive in, you're not gonna really be seeing too much as it kind of has the same deal with lava where you can only see like what's right in front of you. But yeah, you could get infinite chocolate by making a 20 by 20, essentially <laughs> block of liquid chocolate. So last thing we're gonna be going over is builder's tea. Now I didn't bother making a fully automated farm for this as each component is very simple and I think there's really easy ways to do that. First component is milk. Um, so if you go ahead and look up recipe for builder's tea, we can see that we got milk, water, leaves, super easy craft. So we got our milk. Um, you just basically take that little cow farm, put it on here, and then we got water. Uh, what I would recommend for this is pumping it out from a ocean. Pump it out from an ocean, it'll be infinite source. And the last ingredient is leaves. Now, there is a way to automate leaves. So, if you use a deployer with shears, it can harvest leaves. Now, the reason I'm not suggesting that, and the reason I didn't build an automated farm for that, is if you just grab a pair of shears, go to a forest, you can get so many leaves so easily. You can get stacks on stacks on stacks. If you actually look at the recipe, um, takes one leaf, gives you 50 mil buckets of builder's tea, and each tea takes uh, 250 mil buckets. So essentially, each leaf gives you two builder's tea. So it's leaves are such a cheap thing, and making a farm for these would just be too complicated, and you need to make it really big to have it fast enough, or you just have to use like a million deployers. So. It's not really something that I would recommend building in your world. I'd recommend just grab some shears and get some leaves yourself. Now, once you've done that, um, I just got this little chest. I can throw some leaves in there. Let's power up this belt. And it looks like we forgot the funnels. So we'll slap some funnels on there. Once all of our ingredients are in the basin, we're going to grab our coal and fire that bad boy up. 
once everything is ready, should mix down. <laughs> Looks like we forgot the power there too. All right, so let's power that up. All right, so there it goes, mixing it up. Once our tea is fully mixed, it'll come out the spout. Then we got it pumped up into this spout up here, which is filling up our builder's tea. Now what's really cool about the builder's tea is that it actually gives you a little bit of a buff. So if I were to drink the builder's tea, you don't have to need hunger for this. I actually get haste for three minutes. Now this is super, super good. You can mine stuff really fast. Um, it's a great early game way where you don't need a beacon and you actually get haste. I think this is a awesome little buff it gives you. I think there's definitely a lot of uses and I think it's a really fun early game thing to kind of semi-automate and get going in your world. So that's going to do it for today. If you guys have any questions about how the belt or pipes work to this video, um, I've got a, two videos linked down in the description that'll kind of help lead you through how the pipes and belts work in the create mod. Um, if you like the video, you guys know what to do. Bye-bye.